Logic Zero example 27.3, a proof involving a replacement. The rules of equivalence are also referred to as the rules of replacement. Um, this is because an expression can be replaced by its logical equivalent anywhere within a proposition. So you can take just a piece, just a component of a complex proposition. If it matches the patterns found in our rules of equivalence, we can just replace it with its equivalent, no matter how much it's embedded within the structure of a complex proposition. This is very handy. So we might have an example like this. And so if we were given a problem like this, we would just have the premises and, and then the conclusion like this. So you'd be given a, a problem like this to say, com it would say complete the proof. Okay. So we want to figure out how to get from our premises to the desired conclusion. And you may not know how many steps are involved here. Uh, you know, at the end of the, the course, I'm not going to tell you how many steps there are. You're going to have to figure out how to uh, get there on your own. And then ultimately, we'll try to figure out how do we get there in the shortest amount of steps. So your rules are your rules of replacement and also your rules of inference from the previous chapter. And here, what we can do is look at line one, and we can take this and use a rule of replacement. So I'm going to copy this. And using the rule of implication, so let's take a look at that rule. It's back here at this in our master list here of the rules of equivalence. So implication, let's copy that over. We can take this B only of C, so it's like P only of Q, and we can convert it to not B or C. And we can do that right within these parentheses. That's, that's what I mean by rule of replacement. That's what replacement is. You can just replace just a component part of a proposition with its logical equivalent. So we can do not B or C, and we're going to justify that from line one by the rule of implication using the standard abbreviation given in parentheses. And, and then we want to get to uh, not B or C. And we can do that here. We can go not B or C using lines two and three and doing disjunctive syllogism. So the A is like our, our P parts, and maybe we should go back and copy over our rule of disjunctive syllogism. This is under rules of inference. We have disjunctive syllogism. And so we're going to treat P as A and Q in the rule is going to be not B or C, that whole component. And then we negate the P in line two. Notice the ordering is different, but we've discussed that before. The, the order of the premises is not significant. Uh, but we still list them in numerical order. We list the lines of the proof in numerical order when we give our justification. And we're going to justify that with the rule of disjunctive syllogism. And that's what we were supposed to prove. So we're done. 